Hello friends, so today we can discuss the first three problems from the latest lead code bi-weekly contest 45. So let's start. The first three problems will be discussed in this video. So the first problem is sum of unique elements. In this you are given as you can see an array and you have to find that the sum of the elements which are unique in the array which doesn't repeat out uh, like a number of times which appears exactly one. So as you can see in this one and three appears once time. So only the sum of those are printed as four. In this because ones are appearing a lot of times so the total sum is zero because no element is unique and so you do, you just have to do the same thing and because the numbers are up to like 100 only so what you can easily do here is just make a vector of size or like an array of size 100 and just find out the frequency of every element uh, of the 100 elements because the, the like the number of elements can be up to 100 only so you can just find out the frequency of every number and then iterate over all the 100 numbers in this vector and find out which numbers has occurred only once so that's the answer and just find out the answers or like the sum of all those numbers so it's very simple make a vector of all of the like the numbers of 105 so you can also make up till 100 and just find out the frequency of every number in this nums of i then total is the total sum of the unique numbers and iterate over all of these values from 0 to 100 and then find out whatever frequency is 1 which means that the ith number has occurred only once time then total is plus equal to that ith number ith number means that this ith number has occurred only once because I have stored out the frequency and just return out the total so the first problem is very simple the second problem is you just have to like uh, develop an intuition for that this is not a difficult problem the problem states that you have to find out the maximum absolute sum of any subarray okay so in this problem you are given that uh, like you are given like some array and then you have to find out that what is the maximum sum of that subarray if you do an absolute value of that what i mean by this is as you can see the the like the sum of this the, the sum of this subarray the maximum subarray is this 2 and 3 okay so so what you actually have to do here is you just take out a, a sum of a subarray and do an absolute value of this not every value is taken absolute but the like the subarray you'll choose find out the sum of that subarray and then do an absolute value as you can see here now in this as you can see you just find out first the sum then add all those values and then do the absolute value of that okay you just have to maximize it so you just understand that in the first two examples i just understand the logic for this problem by just seeing out the first two examples as you can see the first problem states that it is just finding out the absolute sum of the first subarray which means that uh, like I, I hope you know the Cadence algorithm which is used to find out the maximum subarray sum okay so that's what we are using if we are just finding out the maximum subarray sum of this array okay so see the array like the final answer will be the absolute of like this all the subarrays if the total like if some if, like if somehow I choose a subarray which consists of all the positive numbers only then obviously the absolute value of that will be positive only so like this condition is will not violate which means that like this is of no use the absolute value is not no use because all the numbers are already positive even if i have some negative numbers but if i find out the maximum subarray sum of this array then like maybe i will using kadeen's algorithm i will find out the maximum value but it also has a flip side that i can also find out by using so as you can see if i can find out the maximum subarray of all the positive numbers okay which i mean by this is the the answer of this can be the maximum positive sum or the maximum negative sum because if i find out the maximum negative sum then what i mean by this is i can do a absolute value of the negative sum and that's the answer or i can find out the maximum subarray sum which is positive which is the maximum in positive level such that even if i do a like absolute value it is of no use like that, that's the answer I hope you understand the point the main point of this problem is find out the maximum sum of this subarray and the minimum sum of this subarray okay because if I find out the maximum sum that's the answer or the minimum sum but because you are doing an absolute value of that maybe the minimum sum after the absolute value becomes positive and that become even more greater I hope you understand the point so you have to just find out the maximum sum and minimum sum for maximum sum you can just use Karin's algorithm but for finding out the minimum sum of any subarray the main trick is flip all the numbers what i mean by this is let's assume that i have some numbers in which i just find out the uh, like the maximum sum of the subarray using kadeen's algorithm but if i want to find out the minimum sum what you can easily do here is flip all the numbers sign 
so what will happen that now because all the numbers are negative okay the the cadenz algorithm will find out the minimum sum okay and then you just find out the minimum sum and the answer will be like the like the maximum among all of or both of them and that's the answer so uh so if you don't understand like find out the like you can also watch some videos or geeks for geeks articles for finding out the minimum sum using cadenz algorithm and maximum sum so i'm just finding out that only just finding out the maximum cadenz algorithm sum and then just flipping out the sign of all the elements and then finding out the cadenz algorithm minimum sum and the answer is just maximum among all the cases i hope you understand so it's just finding out the maximum and the minimum of uh, like the, the maximum and minimum sub array which has the maximum sum and minimum sum among this array okay so that's the whole logic for the second problem you can understand even by seeing out these two example i just got a intuition how to solve it out okay the third problem states that it is not also not too difficult it states that you are given an array or like a string you can assume uh, in that string it consists of only the characters a b and c even if the string might consist of x y z uh, you can extend this logic also because this logic uh, can be extended to all the characters also but in this problem they are only given a b and c okay now what you actually have to do here is you just choose a non empty prefix of this string and also a non empty suffix of this string this should not intersect so you have some string okay i can draw it out also uh it uh, so you just have a string and you just have to choose a non empty like this should not intersect a prefix and a suffix and the characters of that prefix and suffix should be same okay so uh, as you can see I, i'm not writing out a string Uh, or i can also write down some string to even make it more clear uh, maybe like this maybe like this this is a good string in which as you can see i'm just writing out this string okay as you can see this is the string okay you can also fill it out okay so as you can see the, like this is the string i can also okay so now as you can see uh, what you can easily see is like you have to first choose a prefix and a suffix which is of like both like both of them should be of the like they should have the same character okay so now what you can easily see here is because aa is in the start and also in the end i can choose this and this and also like delete this from the string okay now the new string is like b c c b like a b b now also choose a prefix and suffix and delete them out so you just keep on deleting up like a prefix and suffix such that they do not intersect and also they should be of the same character so now c c a is left now you cannot choose a prefix and suffix which are of same like the same character okay you can choose a prefix which is c c and this is it so that's how you just stop at this point and this is the final string so you just have to write out the maximum length of the final string which is still. so what you can easily do is just uh, like do the same thing which i am doing so what you can easily do here is like uh, the simple technique is you can use two pointers also but uh, uh, in simple term what you can also use you can use a dq okay uh, because dq is also helpful in removing out the elements from both of the sides so what you can do here is just maintain a dq okay just it's like putting out all the characters in a dq which is like a du like double ended queue in which you can pop out the elements from both front and back okay and just you just have to check that whether the first element and the last element are same if the first and last element are same what you can easily do here is till the dq is not empty keep popping out the elements which are of this like if you compare that okay the first and the last character is a so just store out a somewhere now just keep out the keep popping out the elements from starting till that you just always find out a so you just find out a pop it out find it i pop it out because now it is b to like you you should stop now do the same thing from back because it is a pop it out so now you have a string which is b c c a b b left in the dq okay then do the same thing because can the front and the back same yes so now the front and back element is b so it's somewhere else and then they keep popping out the elements from the back and front of this dq such that both the character should be b so this is popped out this is popped out this is popped out now this is the character which is left now the front and the last element are same no so just break out at this point and after breaking out find out the length of the final string which is left which is cca and that's the answer so that's the logic make a dq and push dot all the elements in the dq then you have to do while this is greater so while the dq length should be greater than 1 
and also if like the front and the back are same if both the front and back are same what you have to do like find out the front val value like because the front and last are same store out the front character and keep popping out the elements from the dq till the dq is not empty and the front element is equal to this okay keep popping out element from the front and do the same thing for back and you just have to keep on doing this till the dq is not become empty or the front and the last character are same if like if like both of the conditions are true because the like front and last are same and also the dq is not empty keep popping out the elements and the final answer is the length of the like the dq which is left i hope you understand the logic and the code for all the three problems if you have still any doubts you can mention in the comment box i'll see you next one till then keep coding and bye